I'm joined on the show tonight by journalist, political commentator and psychologist Bettina Arndt. She's got a piece in the Australian newspaper tomorrow that analyses the sharp increase in young women voting away from conservative politics and for the left. Welcome to the show, Bettina. Thank you, Peter. It's, it's a fascinating subject. Um, you've written a piece tomorrow that confirms that over the last sort of two decades, there's a big, a big movement of women away uh, from the coalition side of politics. It's not necessarily just policy driven. There's a lot of depth into your, in your analysis. If women are half the electorate, to have such a seismic shift away from the centre-right, that spells a lot of trouble for the coalition. Yeah, I mean, it's happening actually across the Western world, but the Australian data is really striking. And, you know, while we have all these the coalition madly worrying about who's going to captain the sinking ship, I mean, they need to look at this iceberg that's already hitting them and they don't realise it, which is the growth in... And this, you know, the sharp turn left from women, more and more women with left-wing views, mm -hmm. and particularly coming out of our universities with left-wing views, and that is the big issue. So I wrote a column a little while ago in the Daily Telegraph. Uh, I looked at last year's election data, and women 18 to 64 years of age, uh, only 35% voted for the coalition, for voted for Malcolm Turnbull, let's say. Mm -hmm. And uh, previously it had been in the 40s under Tony Abbott and in the 40s under John Howard. If 35% of women at last election voted for the party, that means that 65% of the Australian female electorate did not mm -hmm. vote for the centre-right side of politics. Now, I got the what, what's happening. You're going to tell me the why it's happening. Why is it happening? I mean, th this was the fascinating thing uh, because there's academic papers everywhere talking about this shift. No one talks about what's actually going on. That's why I'm fascinated. Yeah. And um, I had got this fantastic data from this, this Australian election study you mentioned, but I got them to look at the trends and to differentiate between males and females. What they find is it's all driven by university graduates. That's what's making, causing the shift left. And particularly the females. Now, there's this fantastic graph, I don't know whether we could show it, which, it which, the which is all about self-defined political orientation. Do you regard yourself as left or right wing? And you find here, um, well, we can see it in a minute. We'll just um, pop it up on the screen if you don't mind. We'll put the, the graph up yeah. and we'll talk to that. Um, but essentially what we'll see is a very level graph for the males. The blue line is the males. So they've gone... Uh, they come out of uni a little bit more left-wing, and women come out incredibly much more left-wing. So so just so for the viewers can follow that at home, yeah. the women are the red line, and you're right, there's a very dramatic shift up, and there's a great gap distance, if you look at the 2016, yeah. sort of 2013. Over period, two decades. There's a big drift of women. Big drift of women. And so why is this? Why would universities be affecting women differently from men? And I, we've had a lot of studies looking at what is being taught in our universities. Women are now 60% of university graduates, and they're mainly taking humanities subjects, which are absolutely captured by postmodernist claptrap, by ideological, you know, neo-Marxist philosophy. And, you know, the men are more likely to be doing the science subjects where there isn't the same ideological bias, if you like. And I, I, I mean, what the evidence shows is that that, that that is how, that is doing something in terms of the, you can see the girls coming out of universities differently from the boys. So I just want to get that graph back up on the screen yeah. uh, in a moment because I think it's interesting, this whole argument about the social justice warrior that's coming out of these classes. And you can see on the graph um, the movement. If you go back to uh, 2007, that's when there was just a real peak movement of the yeah. women away. If you look then at 2016, 2013, 2015, I could argue with someone, they'll say that that's a Tony Abbott jump, but that was Malcolm Turnbull at that election. So even with a uh, prime minister or leader of the Liberal Party that's yep. perceived to be more women friendly than say John Howard, where the line is much closer together through the Howard years, it goes to the point, doesn't it, that it's not necessarily uh, so much the policies on the table from the coalition, uh, who's the Liberal leader. Indeed, you know, the Liberal Party's had a yep. female deputy for 10 years. That's where the growth away for women has been. It's much more than that. It's much more than that. And, and the, the ANU also, the study also has data on 
all, all sorts of attitudes, you know, attitudes to asylum seekers, attitudes to whether unions have too much power. There's now a 16% gap mm. between men and women, with the women feeling the unions don't have too much power and the men, whereas 20 years ago, men and women felt the same about that particular issue. A uh, whole, you know, government spending on Aboriginals, a whole range of questions which you could suggest mm. illustrate this left-right divide and women are consistently showing differences there in becoming more left-wing. Um, so that, that's the start of it. And then I was also interested in looking, okay, you know, we all know lots of people start off left-wing and then they change. A lot of men particularly. Marked by reality. It's called, yeah, you know, mark, mark, well, why aren't, family. why aren't women being marked? So just, yeah, that's an interesting point. So you're saying that over time, even when the men previously had been a little bit left-wing yeah, yeah. at the university, it moderates back to being... More, more of the centre. You're saying that women come out of universities very much to the left and they stay that way. Is that they right? They stay that way. I mean, I picked this all up because I do online dating coaching and I've got these clients who are just impossible when it comes to their political views. They're so intolerant of conservative men. Any man who mentions, you know, liking Tony, or one woman said, anyone, she has a pack with all her friends that no sex for anybody who likes Tony Abbott. <laughs> But there's also, you know, if you watch, if you watch Andrew Bolt, if you watch Alan Jones, I'm sure you're on that list. Oh, then, no. then that means they won't, they won't go out with these men. Really? They're just extraordinary. And men can have, you know, varying political views, but they tend not to be as intolerant when it comes to their partners or their prospective partners, isn't dating that, preferences. Isn't that interesting? So you caught up with Marla Yiannopoulos this week, mm -hmm. and um, that same sort of pejorative trend on uh, prospective partner and who they might vote for, that's also bearing out in the United States as well, isn't it? So yeah. the whole Tinder disease or... Uh... Tinder, Tinder, yeah. There's a whole thing of people, you know, they, they have on Tinder anyone who mentions Trump positively, you know, they're, they're just immediately swiped off. <laughs> they're not really interested. And that's come out there. Now, but of course, Milo is really interesting to me because he's done a lot of work on campuses and he absolutely gets the fact that universities are the key to this whole... So this is the point about it. Yep. We know there's a problem. We've looked at the drift. You're telling me why the drift is happening. And well, the universities are the start. I mean, I would say there are a whole lot of other stuff. Women now dominate union jobs. Women now dominate public sector jobs. Women... Lots of women are single mums, dependent on a, for a period on, you know, government benefits, and that's much more inclined, means they're much more inclined to vote left. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a whole range of issues co coming into play there. Um, but essentially, I think, if you look at all of those factors, what are you going to do about the choices women have? You know, there's not much drift in terms of women taking different choices in terms of their working lives. Um, also, mothers. How do you fight it? You, you fight it you in the university. Milo's arguments. Yeah, that's, Ma, that's what Milo is saying. That that's where we have to start. We have to look at what is happening here in terms of teaching people a particular ideological perspective on the world, shutting down free speech, not allowing a diversity of attitudes on campuses. And Milo's been out there all this week preaching to huge audiences, predominantly young people, mm -hmm. who are absolutely on side in that we have to take back the campuses. And we're organising great stuff for next year. I'm involved in, we want to bring Milo back and a whole range of other speakers that young people know, YouTube heroes, who are involved in trying to create more diverse university campuses. And that's a so critical you, place to start. Look, I agree with you, but how do you contend with the left uh, shutting down free speech in universities. I mean, we saw that in the United States. His yeah. tour was cancelled. Uh, we saw in Melbourne the other day, he's been, he and his promoters have been slapped with a $50,000 uh, police fine, basically, for the resources to stop the protesters. And the why protesters, doesn't our government do something about well, this, that? This is the point. Yep. So the protesters yeah. are protesters of the left. I think there's a risk to democracy. If the left know they can protest and then the bill goes to the right-wing organisation, yep. wouldn't that just incentivise them to put Absolutely. double the amount of protesters at their next event because the bill will be bigger and you'll send the right-wing organisation financially out the back door? And, and, and the, the left are notoriously more vicious mm. and more like... I mean, we, there's been petition after petition encouraging people to get involved in these violent demonstrations against Marlowe.
We've seen on Sydney University conservative clubs ha being handed the same sort of bills for the two that you can't hold this event unless you pay this amount for security. I mean, this is crazy so stuff. So how can young people... and conservative politicians need to take notice of this? So, so we're going to have to wrap and go to a break in a moment. Yeah. But how do young people? And you're right. There are a lot of young people that were in. in energised by, by Marlowe's uh, visit this week. How do young people get involved in this movement to, to mm -hmm. take back the university campuses? Well, young Where can I send them to? Send them to me. I mean, I've, been, I've, I've had young people writing to me for years because I've been writing about some of the crazy stuff on campuses, the campus rape crisis, so-called fake crisis on campus, and, you know, the gender studies courses which are teaching misinformation to girls and making them think these privileged young women teaching them their victims. I mean, how crazy is that? Anyway, so they're writing to me, keep writing to me. We're going to gather a whole group of volunteers to get involved in taking back the campuses next year. And the more people we have on side, the better. And academics. There must be academics out there who are worried about what's happening on our campuses and we'd like to get involved in something that just opens up free speech. Mm. Fantastic. Thank you, There's a bright light at the end of a, a long... Well, long it's going to be a long road, but, you know, it's worth trying, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, Bettina Rahn. I'll put all that detail up on my Facebook page, let people know where they can contact Bettina, and I encourage you to read her very thoughtful and, uh, I have to say, very well-credentialed piece in the Australian newspaper tomorrow. Mm.